It is episode 61 of the We'll Just Agree. To disagree. What was the, dude, why did you just stop? Because Beyonce, I promise when you say it, it sounds like we'll just, I hear disagree when you say it. So I'd be confused. Like, I thought it's called we'll just agree to disagree. That's what I just said. But when you say it, it sounds like to disagree. So I'd be confused. Like, ain't that what I was supposed to say? It is episode 61 of the We'll Just Agree <laughs> to Disagree podcast. You see how easy and quick that was? Now, if you when you rewatch this, listen to the first time when you be like, it's episode 61 of the We'll Just Agree to di-. And I'm like, what am I supposed to say? Because my words flow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, it's episode 61. Oh my gosh. Wow, well over a year of episodes of this great podcast. Thanks to you guys. Thank you so much for listening and supporting and yes. the comments and how much you love it and how we crack you up. Well, at least how Ryan cracks you up because I don't say too much that's funny. But um, yeah. No, but your actions are funny too. Like I think now what I love is the listeners kind of know us a little bit more. So it's like when you say something, the listeners are like, yep, that's a Beyonce statement. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. A Beyonceism, but anyway, um, so we were going to talk about something first. What was it? DL and Monique. Okay, so recently, comic legends DL Hughley and Monique had a little scuffle, if you will. Mm-hmm. Okay, to make a long story short, we know that DL was one of the kings of comedy. Mm-hmm. We know that Monique was the queen of comedy. So why do we have these grown folks out here acting like they're teenagers? Like, I don't understand it. Um, There was a recent comic event and uh, Monique was the headliner. So she says, Mm -hmm. and that was in her contract, D.L. Hughley had an issue apparently with Monique being the headliner, stating that he's not going to open up for no female. Basically, those aren't the words he used. I'm quite sure you know what he used, uh, a derogatory term for a female dog, don't ever use that word around me. And please don't ever call me that word. You shouldn't have reason to, but I'm just saying that is one of the most disrespectful things that can ever be done by a man to a woman in particular. But anyway, especially when you're a professional, especially when you're a celebrity, like seriously, was that even necessary? But anyway, so um, long story short, they had a little riff. Monique came on stage and had a few choice words for Mr. D.L. Hughley. And he came on stage following that and had a few choice words for Monique. The whole thing is just nuts. I'm gonna tell you this, Ryan. You know, I host a lot of shows. I'm on stage a lot. It's just part of the job, right? Um, I don't care what order you put me in. If I were a performer on stage, baby, you could put me first. As long as my check is there. That's all I need. That I don't part. care if I'm the intro. That I don't part. care if I'm in the middle of that thing. I don't need to be the headliner. Is my check ready? Period. <laughs> Your thoughts? I have nothing else to say. I agree. I mean, the money is not going to be different when I go to the bank. Whether it says headliner, whether I went first or last. I think it's whack. I think it's unfortunate that this king and queen are arguing comedy legend. I think that's whack. Any guy that says that, especially him to say it to Monique on stage and some of the other comments that we heard what was said on stage, I think it's super whack. Um, One thing about Monique, she may have issues with a few people in the industry, right? But I think we're learning that some of these people are coming back apologizing to her, Um, just like Lee Daniels did. Allegedly, Tyler Perry has apologized in private, but is not doing it in public. I think there's a few people that, you know, Monique may be crazy and she may have her issues, but... We know Monique not to be a liar, in my opinion. Monique, be real. It may not be the way you want to hear it, but she going to keep it a buck with you. So I don't believe her in this. I'm sorry. I do believe her in this situation. I think DL talks a lot, and I think he met his match. And I think right now, society, the culture, and social media, we love Monique, and we're always going to love Monique, and we're team Monique. So I think we're already going to believe her. And I think DL can say a lot of things about a lot of people and then they may not come back for him. I think Kanye did at one point. Um, But I like that Monique put him in his place, had the receipts to prove it. And at the end of the day, the check is the same, whether I'm the headliner, whether I'm first, last. I don't understand why people have ever gotten into it. I like that some artists now 
I know we can both name a few that we've worked with that don't want to go last, but should mm-hmm. be last. But mm-hmm. specifically say, don't put me last. Yeah, That's the type of person that I would want to be. So yeah. I think it's super whack overall. But at the end of the day, for the culture, I hate when they see this. Honestly, and I hate to bring it up because you know I'm over it. But it's like when you saw Will Smith and Chris Rock get into it, it was oh. kind of like this. I hate to see comedy royalty get into it on social media for all these other people to judge. And, you know, I, I don't like that. Yeah, it, it was just over the top, in my opinion. And it all boils down to ego, in my yep. opinion. Yep. It's just ego. Because do you really care that you're headlining or not? Does it matter? A, a man to call a woman out of her name because you're going before for her that's ego all day yeah. long and let's be honest on. if we're being honest what i'd rather see monique last than dl oh okay i guess it's the whole king queen thing like a king should end the show i don't know but you gotta DL, be funny to be really the serious. one to end the show in my opinion you need to be hilarious facts Facts. Yeah. DL is funny, but you got to really catch it because he has that intellectual comedy. You know what right, I'm saying? He gets right. into the politics. He gets into stuff that's happening in world news. And so you got to really be right there with him to catch it. Don't get me wrong. He is funny. But right. Monique, on the other hand, <laughs> she's like hilarious. Like she talks about just everyday issues. Yeah. You know, yeah. stuff that we all can relate to, stuff that we've probably been through before we watch her at the show. So, and, you know, in my experience with Monique, I've interviewed her several times over the years. Such a kind soul. Just oh, Monique. So down to oh, earth. My God. Yeah. So down to earth. When she walks in, instant hug. Yes. She don't know me from Adam or Eve. Yeah. And I feel like we're best friends by the time she yeah. leaves the interview. And like, it's like if she's oh. met you once, she's going to remember you. Exactly. Oh, she she knows. When she comes in, she's like, okay, this is my other Beyonce boo. Yep. And I'm like, how do you remember that? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just so super cool. But there's two sides to every story. And people know different things that we may not be privy to. But... At the end of the day, anybody want to hire me for something? I don't care where you put me on that program as long as my check is ready. Okay, I don't need to headline nothing. Um, okay, so we are going to talk about um, babysitting. Okay. I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, I used to babysit. Okay. Sporadically, because I have two older sisters. So okay. they obviously got the good jobs because I was the baby. I was still kind of too young and they babysat for all these people who had all this money and I would be like, oh, I want to do that one day. So by the time I was old enough to start babysitting, I only babysat like maybe three or four times. It wasn't really a big deal. But anyway, Wait, according to- Wait, really quick, before we move, huh? before we move uh-huh. forward, I gotta ask, Beyonce, what type of babysitter were you? I just kind of sat in the cut and didn't do much. I, I can't cook. I, uh, I, why are you asking that question? <laughs> I just wanted to know. Hmm. I, just, I just wanted to know. Because <laughs> I can see you being like, all right, I have a list of things that we're here to do. At 6.30, we're going to be doing this. At 6.38, you need to be done with the applesauce because we're going to eat the string cheese. At 6.45, we need to clean up. At 6.46, we're going to have a word of prayer. At six- you know what? Not a word of prayer with kids. Hilarious. Okay, well, I, well. Um, the, the people that I babysat for, they lived in a cul-de-sac. So yeah. it was summertime, obviously. We're out of school. We babysit. So we basically, I basically will watch them play in the cul-de-sac. Oh, that's that was can, pretty much it. Can I say, yeah. I've only babysat one time in my life. Wow. It was a brother and a sister. Mm-hmm. And I fell asleep before they did. Ryan, that's negligence. Wait, that's not good. So when my mom and their mom got home, they were still up and I was knocked out on the couch, but we were all good. Oh my God. That's not a good look, dude. That's not a good look. I actually babysat the people that I did babysit for. Um, you know, them, of course, uh, radio hall of famer, Tom Joyner. I babysat his sons, killer and thriller. 
that's not the real names, of course, but uh, I babysat them and it was so easy breezy and they were so cool, of course, the wife handled everything and it, it was just easy. Babysitting right. is really not that hard. And I say all that to say that according to the Wall Street Journal, babysitters nowadays in 2022, guess how much they make an hour? It shouldn't be more than $12 an hour, $13. That's how much I made when I babysat years ago. What the hell did you babysit? <laughs> I think it was that much, maybe 15. Guess how much? How much? $30 an hour. 30. And we're doing this job for. So at least we both have experience in babysitting, even though I only babysat like maybe four or five times in my entire and life. And I neglected the kids. You neglected a kid, so you might not get another gig babysitting. But $30. 30 an, an hour, hour to babysit. Yes. So a 16, 15, 14 year old can make $30 an hour. Babies. You know what though? You know what though? Th this is what's wrong with our our generation. Now, me and you actually just talked about this off mic. Mm -hmm. This is what's wrong. They babysit at the age of sixteen for thirty dollars an hour. They then go to school, they get a degree, and they come work for jobs like here. And they want to request all this money with no experience, but because they used to make thirty dollars an hour as a babysitter, they looking like. I watch kids for $30 an hour. Y'all gonna just pay me. This is what's wrong with society. I'm just telling you, dude. I, and, and you know, the reason why, there's a lot of reasons why, you know, we're in inflation right now and yeah. we're coming out of the pandemic still, but a lot of people can't afford to send their children to an actual daycare mm -hmm. or an official child provider mm -hmm. during the week, five, six hours out the day, mm -hmm. eight, nine, 10 hours out the day. Like daycare is a lot of money. But it I will say, so in that case, I look at it differently. If somebody is really watching your child five days a week, I mean, mm -hmm. breakfast, doing school work with them, lunch, dinner, all that stuff, I could see why that is acceptable. Now, when I mm -hmm. hear babysitter, I think of my parents are going out on a Friday night, three hours, we need a babysitter. Yeah, now, if you're getting paid $30 for, for that, that's ridiculous. But if you have somebody who's there Monday through Friday, instead of daycare, then I can understand that. Yeah, but these are just babysitters though. It's not like that official, okay, you make the meals, you make sure they're changed and written. It's not really like that. It's just a typical teenager who's babysitting. What does a teenager a even need that hours, money for? A few hours out of the day and then wait as an incentive for good daycare and child care. They're letting them order whatever they want. Like, hey, go to Uber Eats, order whatever you want and all of that. And I'm just like, wow, times have really changed. And, and I read another blog somewhere where they get gifts from like Tiffany and company. And- Beyonce, and say, stop reading these white people blogs. This <laughs> ain't no black people. So stop reading these white people blogs. Don't bring no more topics to this podcast that you want to cover. Talk about these white topics. Now I've been sitting here quiet this whole time. And you talk about $30 gifts, Uber, <laughs> Tiffany's. And I love my white people. I'm, if you watching this, we love you here at the podcast. But this is a, this ain't, this ain't us. This topic, we could have ended this topic a long time ago. Right, no, 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 The Wall Street Journal ain't black. Ain't they a Black Street Journal? Because this ain't us. You then went from Uber Eats to Tiffany, $30 an hour. Beyonce, come on. I'm just saying, I was taken aback when I read I've been trying to have this conversation this whole time. And you just wanted to keep telling me all these white people stuff. This ain't us. But Ryan... Call me a nigga babysitter. Where that babysitter at? But I want to hear that babysitter. What the, what? the gist of the story is young adults, teenagers are making $30 an hour. Uh, That's the gist that of the ain't story. it. That ain't it. We can wrap this. I'm sorry for whoever watched this story and, try, and watched this podcast and tried to relate. I'm sorry. I've been trying this whole time because $30 seemed out of our price range. So I'm sorry for everybody who's been watching it like me. Like, that, okay, but this now she wants to come over here and talk about Uber Eats and Tiffany as gifts, as an incentive. I mean, think about it. Like, child care is very important in our country. It is. It is. <laughs> And if you can afford to pay a babysitter I mean, thirty dollars an hour, I mean that that's a good look. I'm not mad at it either. Like 
I would Me I either. would go back and try to do that for 30 on the side though for Hello? a weekend. Look, low key, I'm like, uh, what I'm doing this weekend? <laughs> Wait, what's <laughs> up? I, I got some habits I gotta feed. $30 okay. an hour, that's gas money. What? True. Oh, seriously. I just thought it was very interesting. Like today is a whole different ball game from back in the day. I wish I did make $30, 30 an hour, an hour baby for babysitting. That's I wish I did get, get gifts from Tiffany from the people I babysit for as an incentive to stay on their payroll. What? I'd be like, okay, what else you need me to do? Seriously. But uh, yeah, you're right. That's not likely in our communities, but nevertheless, you never know. You never know. Okay, so much for episode 61 of the We'll Just Agree. <laughs> to disagree podcast. Next week, we get in a topic from the Shade Room, Chicago Media Take. We get one of them tap topics. This is this is mm -mm. Okay, hilarious. Uh, follow us at uh, We'll Just Agree to Disagree on Instagram. You can follow me on all social media platforms at Beyonce Fox. <laughs> You can follow me at Ryan Media Lee. I'll be honest, we have a meeting right after this podcast. <laughs> I want to know the people who's giving out the Tiffany gifts. That's who I want to meet. <laughs> I'm available to babysit. <laughs> I am too, actually, at that point. I won't neglect them, though. Period. Right, okay. We're out of here. Beyonce. <laughs> Never fails. You pick next week's topic. Oh, oh I will. Trust me. We take, I will. I will. <laughs> Can't wait. Can't wait. Bye, y'all. Uh, deuces. <laughs> <laughs>